Parshas Vayakel. So when I look at Parshas Vayakel, there's really one word that stands out in my mind, and that's the word dedication. And I'll explain to you why. On most years where we get to read Vayakel and Bakude as one big parsha, as if, as if it's one big story, the story of building the Mishkan. Moshe Rabbeinu comes down from our Sinai on the day of Yom Kippur and tells the Jews to build the Mishkan. And indeed, they start building the Mishkan, and next week's Parsha, they complete the Mishkan. One big story, and they really should be, two Parshas should be in one, like we read most years. But this year, and we get it every few years, we get to read Vayakla Bakude in two separate Parshas. And it's beautiful because we get to appreciate the lesson of each Parsha. Next week's Parsha, Bakude, is the story of accomplishment. But they should accomplish, and there's a lot of wonderful ideas to to bring out from there. But this week's parsha is the parsha of Ayaka, the parsha of dedication, the parsha of working, the parsha of efforts, where B'nai Israel put their efforts into there. And there's a lot of wonderful lessons to be able to glean from the parsha. And to appreciate the beauty of the efforts, irrelevant of the accomplishments. The Torah says, that if the Moshe Benu asked the B'nai Israel for contributions and volunteers, it says, the Ramban says, why such a language of nisa'o libo? Nisa'o means like to lift up your heart. What's the idea of lifting your heart? Usually the word used is nadivus leiv, generosity. Why do we find the word nisiut leiv, to lift up your heart? What is the difference of these two terminologies? And the Ramban says that nadivus refers to generosity and that refers to contribution. The Yisrael are asked to contribute the gold and silver and all the material. They have to give up of their assets. That was nadivus. And that the Yisrael did as well. But then it was nisiusli, nisiusli bo, to lift up your heart. And that was to volunteer your work. But still, why is that called nisiusli bo? So Rabban says that a fascinating thing. He points out that the Jews in the Midbar were not trained to be able to do what they were asked to do. Moshe Rabbeinu asked the Jews, we need volunteers who can do embroidery. We need volunteers who can work with metals, who can engrave on the metals. We need people to melt things down. We need... We need people to do very fine work. Slaves, if you know about slaves, they do very, we we'll call the gross motor skills. Very good at lifting heavy bricks. But doing the fine arts of being able to do small things with your hands of the, of the, of, of the, of the fine motor skills, that was something that B'nai Israel and slaves in general are not trained at. And B'nai Israel coming out of its shrine, were now asked, were now given the task of building a mishka that required skills that they did not have. And now that they didn't have it, Nobody around them had it. Looking around the room over here, who has these skills? But Afal Pike, nevertheless, the Israel decided to volunteer and pick themselves up and says, if you believe in us, Moshe, and if Hashem believes in us, we will do it. And that was the Nesius Libo. And that's what Benesho put into it. The Ravana asks that, why is it that the Torah repeats the story of the Mishkan over and over again? And that's like this. In Parshish true and Tetzada, Hashem gives the architecture of the architectural plans of the, of the Mishkan to Moshe Benu. He tells Moshe Benu what the Mishkan is supposed to look like. He tells Moshe Benu what the, all the begadim, the clothing of the Kohanim should look like. In this week's parish, Moshe Benu just hands the plans over to Bnei Yisrael. And Bnei Yisrael implement the plan. It would have been enough for the Torah to state that Bnei Yisrael did exactly what they were told to do. We already know the plans. There's no reason, at first glance, for the Torah to repeat to us the entire plan over again. That Bnei Yisrael built the Aron according to these dimensions. And that Bnei Yisrael built the shulchan according to these dimensions, and they took the drapery and they built it according to these dimensions, and they put them together according to this way. There was no reason for that. We already know the plan. That's exactly what was written in Parshas Truma. And there's really very few differences between the plan that Hashem gave over to Moshe Rabbeinu and the implementation of the final six parsha. And therefore, why is it that the Torah needs to repeat every step of the way? Bnei Israel did it, and the Rabban says because that Hashem cherished every single action that Bnei Israel did. Every effort that B'nai Israel did was put, they put their heart and their soul into building the Mishkan. And that's ultimately what Hashem requires from, from the Jews. I want to see your pure dedication. I want to see your actions being done in the Shem Shemayim. And that's which part we'll look at the accomplishment. We'll see what you're able to accomplish. But right now, Parsha Vayakel, let's look at the efforts. And the efforts also is a beautiful thing. And Hashem cherishes it. That's the language of their mind. Chiba, Hashem has endeared to Hashem. And that's the lesson of the Parsha. It's a wonderful idea to apply to many areas of our life, especially in the areas of Odas Hashem, that we're asked to put our efforts into, into doing the mitzvot to Hashem. Sometimes we feel we're not capable of doing it, but if Hashem gave it to us, Hashem believes in us, and we're able to do it, and it's the efforts that we put into those mitzvot, the Avodas Hashem, 
that Hashem gives over to us, it's the efforts that really count. The accomplishments, that's another Parsha. Good job, Parsha.